this is what you're you're paying for this green grass and this um you know all these units were all one one hundredth of an owner of all this outside maintenance and the streets and the plants and things of that nature probably a pool and a gym and everything else equipment all of that all right those are your assessments your special assessments your periodic assessments let's say we had to get repaved here and we'll talk about these in a few minutes what do we have to get repaved here and we it cost um Let's say it costs uh, fifty thousand dollars, right? If this costs fifty thousand bucks, we're going to get one one hundredth of that fifty thousand bucks as a special assessment, right? To pay for the resealing of the pavement, all right? If it's not in our if it's not in our reserves to do it, or it's not planned, and there's an emergency, in this particular case, we're going to do special assessments. Special assessments are a little bit different than your taxes. We'll talk about that. Stay with me. Um, all owners, depending on it, would be billed for their fair share of the assessments. Yes. Yes, they would be billed for the fair share of the assessments. Okay. So that's condo. Seven-day right of rescission on a new building. You have to give them a preliminary plat map before they sign the contract. And then if, if it's different when they get the final plat, they have a seven-day right of rescission. Okay. A cooperative, a co-op. If you live in the big cities, you know what co-ops are, okay? These are usually big buildings with a lot of living spaces that are owned by a corporation. Um, the owners don't, you purchase shares. I'm looking at the, um, the you, um, you purchase a proprietary share of stock. So if you want to go live in a cooperative or a co-op, you purchase a share of stock and the board of directors says, yes, you can live here or not. And this is what's going to cost you. The property is still titled and owned by this board of directors. You do not have ownership of a co-op. You do not have ownership of a co-op, all right? You buy stock. So you own personal property. Again, let's use that same 100. There's 100 people in this co-op. Now, I only have heard of one co-op in North Carolina, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. And it's out in Charlotte, and off the top of my head, I can't remember what it is. But if somebody knows one that's not out there, let me know because I'll add it to my list. But I only know of one. But I used to work in New Jersey and New York, and I know about the Bronx, and I know about Co-op City in the Bronx, and I know about all of those others. So if you go around a different city, there are a lot of co-ops. And these things are owned by a corporation, which makes owning land more accessible, right? In the middle of Manhattan, how many of us can buy any of you? Uh, I mean, maybe there are, but I don't know many people could just go buy 100 units in the center of Fifth Avenue, right? I, I don't think that happens. So if we get a corporation to do it and then sell these proprietary shares. Now, here's the problem. Who's responsible for paying the taxes? And who's responsible for keeping the maintenance? And who's responsible for, um, you know, all of the anything that comes about? The, the corporation, right? The corporation. The corporation decides one year or misses one year and they can't pay the taxes. Can your property, your, your share of stock be sold as part of a tax sale? Sure, you don't own any of it. You own a share of stock, it could be worthless, right? Could be worthless. So very, very difficult. So this, a co-op is owned by a corporation. You don't have ownership. You can live there, but you have a proprietary share of stock, all right? You are a personal property. You live there. And you're going to pay that HOA fee, that a condo, condo fee or that co-op fee every month. It's going to be a maintenance fee, right? You do not have a deed in this. Okay, so that's cooperatives. I wouldn't worry too much about them. Just know they exist and know that you don't own them, all right? You own stock, personal property. If you want to own land, you need to buy a townhouse, okay? In this townhouse, the difference between a townhouse and a condo per se is that the townhouse owns the land underneath the building. A condo does not, okay? So these are usually split up and down. They're two levels, right? But you also own the land underneath here, all right? So we have party walls in between. 
We're all usually hooked together, five or six in a row. This is individual ownership. It's much like a condo, not like a co-op, much like a condo. All right. And the only difference, big difference, is that land that the property was uh, built is owned by the townhome owner. All right. But it's the same thing for your common areas, your swimming pool, your um, your meeting rooms, your gymnasiums, anything else that's shared by the others. That's just like a condo. You have an undivided share of the entire thing. All right. A non-partitionable share. OK. Now, new townhomes. Remember we said new condos? You have, what, a seven-day right of rescission? Not in townhomes. New, that only covers condos. Only covers condos. Townhomes are not covered, okay, under the North Carolina Condominium Act. Not covered. So you buy it, you're in. You don't have a right of rescission, okay? They do have your, you're still going to pay your monthly HOA fees or your monthly POA fees. That's going to happen. That's going to be monthly, monthly. All right. So that is really the difference between a townhome and a, um, and a condo. Two big differences. The first is the townhome, you own the land. And the second is that there's no right of rescission. All right. No right of rescission. And the HOAs are going to work the same way as a condo. The main in general, um, the shared properties and the shared uh, investments are all going to be an undivided share. Everybody's going to get to use it, a non partitionable share. Sure. Okay. Let's talk about timeshares. When you talk about timeshares, you must have a license in North Carolina to sell timeshares. Must have a license in North Carolina to share, to sell timeshares. Now I say that, and I, I I say that a couple of times because all you have to do is cross the border to South Carolina, and you do not need a license to sell timeshares. You don't need a license in South Carolina to sell timeshares. You do in North Carolina. Okay. So this is a hybrid ownership, right? We're going to share this building. Where else could we own a, a piece of property on the beachfront for oh you know at all? In most cases, some people can, most of us can't, all right? Now, let's remember the rule of five, the rules of five for timeshares, okay? By definition, by definition, what is a timeshare? And it is the right to occupy a unit during five or more separated time periods over at least five years. So five time, five time periods over a minimum of five years, at least five years, okay? And you have a five-day right of rescission on your purchase. You go in there today and you buy it, you have five days to get your money back. The timeshare organization has, 10, has to keep your money in the trust account for 10 days, two times five. All right, so let's go through that again so you can remember this. Hybrid ownership, by definition, a you have the right to occupy a unit during five or more separate time periods over at least five years, all right? And this is covered by the North Carolina Timeshare Act. You have a five-day right of rescission. You got five days to get your money back, okay? And you have... Um, you have to stay in escrow account for 10 days or until the contract is rescinded. Um, is there a space also owned in, in townhomes? No. That's community property. You own one one hundredth of the airspace. And you own the ground underneath, but you do not have air rights. That belongs to the community. You have 10 days to get, uh, they have to keep it in the bank, in their trust account. Okay. All right. Five or more time periods over five years, five day right of rescission. Money has to stay in that escrow account for 10 days or until the contract is full withdrawn. Again, the timeshare use may, may or may not be transferable per contract. Sometimes you can give it to somebody else, sometimes you can't. Timeshares are difficult depending on the contract language and everything else, all right? You have to have a license to sell these timeshares. 
And the real estate commission may fine the developer $500 per violation with no maximum fine total in Appendix A. Now, every time somebody buys a unit, every time somebody sells a unit, every time they change a bylaw, these all have to be registered with the North Carolina Real Estate Commission. Okay, so they are under the direct supervision of the Real Estate Commission. Now, I will tell you that the Real Estate Commission cannot find the agent, can't find a broker. They can get you in front of a judge, but they can find a real estate developer. They can find one, $500 per violation. So if they forget to send the registrations in by, um, by uh, June 30th, which is the deadline of the fiscal year, for everyone on that registration list, it's going to be a $500 fine. All right. And commonly you own properties, the swimming pool, the, you know, the tennis courts, whatever you have out there that you're going to share, you have limited use of those. It's commonly owned, right? Everybody owns a piece of it, an undivided part of the whole. Let's talk about trusts. Let's talk about trusts here. Tiger has an incredible amount of money. God bless him. But for the grace of God, go I. And talent. I have none. Um, but he's got this big amount of money. Okay. Do you think that if Tyler's selling his house, either Tyler is selling their house, and they're selling it for $500,000, and Sam Hassel walks up and knocks on the door and says, hey, I want to, um, I'm looking to buy in your house. I'll make you an offer for $480,000. Would either oh. Tyler consider it just for me, my property? They might think about it depending on how long, right? That seems fair, right? Maybe you negotiate, maybe come down a little, maybe I go up a little, whatever. If I knocked on the door as a real estate agent to either one of them and I said, hey, my client's Tiger Woods, and he wants to offer you $490,000 for your property. Will they accept it? Do you think either one of them are going to give back Tiger Woods $10,000 off the price of their house? As a matter of fact, I am willing to bet. Yeah, exactly right. Tyler just put in there $600,000 now. Oh, Tiger, wait a second. Let me hold on. Let me make a change. Hang on. Right? They're not going to give them a break. Yeah, 1.2. The price is going up as we sit here. All right. So they're not going to give him a break. So it's not fair. I, yes, and I know he's got deep pockets. Oprah's got deep pockets. I all got deep pockets. That doesn't mean I can stick my hand in. Right? That doesn't mean that. Nor Tyler, because Tyler's just a mean guy. He's not very friendly. All right. So now what's going to happen is this. Tiger's going to hire an attorney. And the attorney is going to be called, I don't know, let's just call it the Golden T Trust, okay? And now I go to Tyler's, either Tyler, and I say, hey, I have a company that wants to purchase your house for $475,000. And they say to me, well, who's your company? And I say, well, it's the Golden T Trust, and they are um, you know, good buyers, they have money, they're doing well. And then now they say, okay, that's fine. So now we can get into some sort of arm's length transaction to make it fair. So all Tiger did was set up what's called a trust. A group of attorneys or any a single attorney, doesn't have to be a lot, that are going to act as them, as Tiger and his beneficiaries, okay? And they are gonna represent them. But they are going to do it as a unit that is um, that's allowed to buy and sell real estate in the name of this bene these beneficiaries. So first big square there it says a trust is a legal arrangement in which a grantor, which would be in our case their example Tiger, uh, establishes a trust arrangement and transfers assets to the trust for a person trustee to control and manage the property for benefit for the benefit of the beneficiaries. Golden T trustees, a group of attorneys, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe from uh, Jupiter, Florida. That's the attorneys group. They're the, they, they operate Golden Tea. The beneficiaries of Golden Tea would be Tiger Woods, Tiger's kids, probably his ex-wife, right? 
probably, uh, well, I don't know if his new girlfriend's on there yet, but definitely members of his family. They would all be beneficiaries. So if anything happened, bought or sold, Tiger doesn't have to get involved. He's paying this trustee to handle this stuff. All of these things. Oprah's the same way. Oprah doesn't go out and knock on doors and say, hey, I want to see your house. I think I'm really going to buy it, right? Because she go to Tyler's house and it cost her five mil, right? Because that's who we are. And Tyler, Tyler was the first to say it. At least he had enough nerve to say it. We'd all do it, right? We'd all do it. So it's not fair. That's why they establish these trusts. And these are attorneys. These are companies that are just doing trust accounts. That's what they do, they do trust, all right? So they can transfer legal ownership. Now the trust owns the property. The trust owns the property. They do the purchase, but they do it in, in um, they do it for the beneficiaries. Who's the beneficiaries? All right, Tiger in the group. Okay, so Tiger's already set out the groundwork. This is what you can do. You can buy the house, sell the house. You're going to maintain the house for me. I don't want to do anything, right? So he's got to lay out those parameters, and they do that. Now here's the key to that. Remember, does everybody know who Tiger Woods is? I shouldn't assume that. I'm going to assume you do, all right? About two years ago, he was in a pretty bad crash out in California in his car. And by all intents and purposes, he should be dead right now. But he lived through it. Now, let's say the worst happened there, but he died. All If he didn't have this stuff in trust with these trustees, Here's what happens. He's got a will that says all of his ownership, all of his things go to his estate, his kids. Maybe his slice goes to his ex-wife. The state of Florida gets the first crack at that for inheritance tax. Now, usually inheritance taxes are somewhere in the level of if it's below 5 million, they're not going to touch them. Is Tiger's estate worth more than $5 million? Significantly more, right? Significantly more. Well, before those kids got that money, those kids would have to pay an inheritance tax on that money. But now if Tiger's in a trust and Tiger was unfortunately killed in that, tra in that crash, who owns the houses? Who owns all the Tiger stuff? The trust owns it. The kids are still beneficiaries, right? Nothing changes. That trust still owns it. So nothing changes. So it allows it allows um, materials to flow without going into probate, without going into probate. Nothing really changes. We just eliminated one of the beneficiary. I mean, I, I'd hate anything to happen to the guy, but um, because he's gone, kids are still beneficiaries. Nothing happened to the purchase. That's because it was in a trust. It wasn't in Tiger's name. Okay. We have Tiger, we have Charlie, and we have Sam Woods. Those are his two kids, in case you don't know. All right. They set up, they call the attorneys at Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, okay? At, attorneys at law. Attorneys. And Tiger says, set me up a trust. So that I can purchase this house in Jupiter, Florida for $10 million. It costs more than that, but let's just say. So he calls Dewey and he says, Dewey, he says, all right, Dewey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wire over 10 million, um, whatever, okay? 10 million, 500 bucks. It'll cost him more than 500 bucks. But again, to your office to purchase this house. <clears throat> Dewey goes to, all right, they create what's called the Golden Tea. The Gold Tea Trust. Okay, so now what happens is the Gold Tea Trust finds a real estate, they probably have a real estate agent on, on site, so Gold T Trust, all right, the Gold T Trust 
goes to Shanta's house and says, Shanta, Tiger wants to give you 10 million for your house. Or actually, they don't say that at all. They say, Gold Tea Trust would like to purchase your house for $10 million. Shanta says, yeah, Shanta was quick, man. Negotiate a little bit. Shanta says, yes. Okay. They do the documents. They do everything else. And who was the owner of that property? Gold Tea Trust. Now, who is the real owner of that property? Shanta doesn't know that that who gold tea. All she knows is 10 million is 10 million. And I'm listening. Right? She doesn't care. The trust bought it. She might ask a question, and they say that, you know, Dewey says, I, I'm not at liberty to talk about our members, but um, we'll be happy to pay you in cash if you want. All of a sudden, Shanta stopped asking questions. Right? Uh, yeah, no questions asked, absolutely. So she don't care. And now Gold Tea Trust now owns a piece of property. So now, two years down the road, Tiger says, sell it. I don't really want it. Now Gold Tea becomes the grantor, right? Now Gold Tea becomes the grantor because they're going to sell it. Who's going to buy it? Who's going to buy it? Shamara's going to buy it. She is going to be the grantee. She's going to be the person who is going to purchase it. At no time did we ever talk about the tiger and his two kids. And we just made a $10 million transaction. Shanta uh, Shamara came in and paid $10 million in cash, and life was good. Now, so now in this particular case, Gold T was the grantor. Back to our original question, are they the grantor? That's how it works. Yeah, right? Tiger made $13 million. Now, a weird thing about real estate. If it slips out when they're selling this property, that Tiger is a part owner of this property, is there a value to that? Is there intrinsic value to that? Oh, yeah. So don't you think Dewey, Cheetah, and Howe went out and said, I, you know what? I think Tiger owns a part of this, but don't tell nobody. It'll be our secret. And then the word gets around. Does Oprah really own a house in every state? No. All right? Unless I'm dead wrong, and I could be. But she doesn't own a house in every state. All right? But everybody thinks she has a house in every state. Why? Because the word gets out. Why not? If I was buying a house that was owned by Tiger Woods versus buying a house that was owned by Sam Hassel, what would have more value? I own Tiger Woods' house, right? I'll pay an extra whatever, 10%. Very cool. Neat. I own that. Thank you for what it's worth. Those things have value. And there's no value to it. It's still a $10 million house, right? Now, just because somebody else owned it, it's worth X amount of dollars. That's why these trusts, they keep the popular people out, right? They keep the popular people out. All right, so that brings us to the end of chapter two. So it may have been a little bit of time, so let's just go through this. An appurtenance is something that runs with the land, right? Something that runs with the land. If you sell it, it goes with it. Water rights are appurtenant. Easements, which we'll talk about in the next chapter, are pertinent. Okay, all of those things are pertinent. They run with the land. If you sell it, it goes with them. Okay. We've talked earlier about fee simple absolute, which is the best kind. The word fee means inheritable. Absolute means you can do whatever you want with it. Right? Leave it to your heirs, no restrictions. Irma, 
these are the four tests of a fixture, all right? And these four tests must provide that it is a fixture, otherwise it will fail the test. If it goes to court, right? Intent, right? Relationship, method of attachment, right? Intent, relationship, method of attachment, adaptation to real estate, right? Does it fit there? Is it nice there? What? How did I do it? What did I want to do, right? If I ended, uh, if I planted 400 trees in my backyard, they're, they're there to keep, right? That's adaptation. Ownership, you have the four different tenancies, right? Ownership and severalty, joint tenancy rights of survivorship, tenancy in common, which I can leave to my heirs, and tenancy by the entirety, husband and wife, all right? Husband and wife. If you like this video, feel free to share it with a friend. For more real estate education content, please subscribe to the channel. From all of us at Seacoast Real Estate Academy, thank you for watching.